Good morning, gang. Grab your Bibles. Today we're going to be in the Gospel of Mark, Mark 16. Now, each one of the Gospels tells this story, and each one tells it a little differently. Um, all basically the same, but each remembers it's from their point of view. So Mark has a little different take on it. And I like how Mark did it this time. So we're gonna we're gonna read from Mark. So Mark chapter 16, verses one through one through eight is where we're gonna go today, okay? So on to the exciting part of the story. The horribleness is behind us. He's paid, he's paid the price. He's died for our sins. And Satan has been defeated. It's wonderful. Okay, let's read Mark chapter 16, 1 through, one through 8. 1 through 8? Yeah, 1 through 8. <laughs> okay, and when the Sabbath was passed, okay? So the Sabbath was their holy day. That's their that's Saturday. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, that's the aunt to Jesus, and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Remember what I said about how they would wrap them in layers of cloth and they would put oils and herbs and things on the body to preserve the body. And the and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, so very early. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the, the door of the sepulcher? They're, they're like, oh, we hadn't really thought about this. We didn't bring a big guy with us to roll the stone. Usually it took one or two men to roll that huge stone away. They hadn't done that. But they walked onto the to the tomb, to the sepulcher. And verse 4, and when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. For it was very great. They were shocked by that. Who, who did this? Who opened the grave? We were, sh we were supposed to be the first ones here to take care of him. We don't know of anybody else who's coming to take care of the body. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they were frightened. They were afraid. Can you imagine? This is an angel sitting there in the tomb. He looks like a young man and he's in a long white white gown and I'm sure he was glowing and they I would have been horrified too. I probably would have screamed, dropped all of my herbs and things and run. They didn't though. Let's see what happens. Okay. So uh the, 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 verse six and he saith unto them, Be not affrightened, don't be afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. So he said, look, see, there's the place where they laid him. He's not here. He's risen. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Okay, I would have been too. They did, did, they did marvelously well. <laughs> I would have run screaming before he even started talking. But the angel told him, go and tell the disciples and Peter. Now, why would he have said it that way? Peter was one of the disciples. Got any ideas? They did it because remember how Peter had said to Jesus, I will never betray you. Everybody else might betray you, but I will never betray you. Right? <laughs> and what had he done? While Jesus was in with Pilate, he was outside and he had betrayed Christ three times before the rooster crowed. And he went out and he was so ashamed. And the Bible, remember the Bible told us that he actually had eye contact with Christ after he had betrayed him. So I imagine that Peter was really feeling like he had let Christ down. And here the angel says, go your way, tell his disciples and Peter. That shows how much 
God loves us. He knew that Peter was going to have it far more rough, I think, than the other other disciples, because because he had he had openly betrayed Christ, and yet God still loved Peter. I think that's wonderful because sometimes we will fail Christ. Sometimes we will fail God. We will sin and we have to ask forgiveness for that. And then once we ask forgiveness, he forgives us and takes our sin away again and, and we're clean and we have a great um, relationship once again with him. And that's the same with Peter. So that's, I think, why they added, why he added, and tell the disciples and Peter. And so the ladies leave the tomb. They're so shocked, they don't even talk to each other along the way. They don't talk to any person until they get to the disciples. And then they can't wait to tell the disciples what had happened. And we're going to pick it up from there next time. It gets even better, though. I wish I could tell it all to you right now, but we're going to have to wait until the next time. So remember that I love you. Have a great day.